Welcome to the Coronavirus Weekly Brief. We're your hosts. I'm David Sturman. And I'm Melissa salak with New America. Here are the headlines you need to know. China reported 57 new cases of domestic coronavirus transmission on Sunday, the highest daily count since March 6. The new infections brought mainland China's total case count to 83,891, according to the National Health Commission, which reported the information on Sunday. Meanwhile, Hong Kong announced Monday that dining in restaurants and gatherings of more than two will once again be banned after the territory logged a record high of 145 new infections. The United States has passed 4 million coronavirus cases after 70,000 new cases were recorded on Thursday, and the second highest day of new coronavirus cases was recorded on Friday at 73,400. The United States recorded 67,000 new cases on Saturday, bringing the weekly rolling average to 66,752 cases, reports the Washington Post. By Sunday, the Wall Street Journal noted that cases dropped to 51,215. One hospital in Texas has seen more cases in its county than it has beds for. Star County in South Texas is now, quote, forming ethics committees to help determine which patients should be treated and which should be sent home to die instead, unquote, reports the New York Times. The county's rate of infection per 100,000 residents is now 2,350, and the hospital only has 29 beds in its COVID-19 unit. Florida passed the 400,000 coronavirus case mark on Friday, one day after Governor Ron DeSantis said cases had quote-unquote clearly stabilized across the state, reports NBC News. On Saturday, Florida recorded 414,511 total cases, and the state has had over 10,000 coronavirus cases every day over the last seven days as hospitalizations have risen by 79% since July 4th, according to data and reports by The Washington Post, Florida Department of Health, and CNN. Florida has announced its youngest COVID-19 death, a nine-year-old girl. Florida also has 54 hospitals with intensive care unit beds at capacity, with another 40 hospitals nearing capacity, according to the Agency for Healthcare Administration. On Friday, over 150 health and medical experts across the United States signed a letter calling on the federal and state governments to reinstate stay-at-home orders as the countrywide coronavirus cases continue to trend upward, according to U.S. News and World Report. In part, the letter read, quote, Right now, we are on a path to lose more than 200,000 American lives by November 1st. Yet, in many states, people can drink in bars, get a haircut, eat inside a restaurant, get a tattoo, get a massage, and do myriad other normal, pleasant, but non-essential activities, unquote, reports CNN. On Thursday, for the first time in 16 weeks, the Department of Labor reported an increase in initial unemployment claims, with 1.4 million Americans filing for the first time during the week of July 20th. First-time claims peaked in late March with 6.9 million claims and have fallen each week since until last week. Continued claims for the week were at 16.2 million, showing a drop of almost 1 million claims from the previous week. As unemployment claims continue to look to be increasing, the additional $600 in weekly unemployment benefits is set to expire on July 31st. According to the new Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 47% of American adults have an underlying condition strongly tied to severe COVID-19. Researchers looked at data of 3,142 American counties across all 50 states and Washington, D.C., to see the prevalence of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, heart disease, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, CKD, and obesity. These listed pre-existing conditions were more prevalent in rural areas than in urban areas, but higher numbers of any condition were found in large metropolitan regions of the country. According to analysis of the CDC report by the University of Minnesota's Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy, quote, Prevalence of obesity was 35.4%, while it was 12.8% for diabetes, 8.9% for COPD, 8.6% for heart disease, and 3.4% for chronic kidney disease, unquote. U.S. counties with the highest prevalence of pre-existing conditions were in the southeastern part of the United States and Appalachia, particularly in Alabama, Arkansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, and West Virginia, 
as well as some counties in Oklahoma, South Dakota, Texas, and Northern Michigan, among others, notes the CDC. University of South Carolina Assistant Professor of Public Health, Monique J. Brown, told the Wall Street Journal, quote, if we had better health outcomes, if we had less diabetes, less hypertension, less cardiovascular disease, then we would probably not see the morbidity and mortality that we see today from COVID-19, unquote. A new report by Capital Area Food Bank estimates that the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area could see a 60% increase in food insecurity over the next year due to coronavirus. Despite having the second highest median income of any metro region, D.C. has a long history of widespread inequity among the city's residents, according to the Urban Institute. Those wealth gaps, coupled with increases in unemployment and poverty caused by the pandemic, could lead to an additional 200,000 to 250,000 people in the region becoming food insecure in the next year. To see our daily brief, go to the address in our show notes and follow us on Twitter at New America ISP. And tune in next week for our next episode.